In this presentation, we're going to discuss the features of using a dynamic query string to update records in an existing table. This feature can be found under the Configure application under Configure Data Logging. There, if we select the local service, we'll find under the Database tab, when it's enabled, the ability to update records with a query string. When enabled, this can be either a fixed query string or a dynamic query string from a calculation tag. And in this example, I'll walk you through how to create that calculation tag to make that update. If you have not viewed the full opcdatabase.net training video, I would suggest to do so now. If you select Help and Training Videos, that will take you to the online training page at opcsystems.com. Let's begin by defining some data that we want to log into the system. I'm going to use this under configure tags and just define some fixed values. These can also be from OPC items or calculations that you want to log as well. First I'm going to select to add a group and I'll use a group name batch data. I'll then go down to select that group and right click on it to add a tag. The first tag I'm going to add is called lot number. This tag I'm going to make an integer tag it could also be a string tag. It would be typically a value coming from a PLC that indicates that this is the particular lot number of the data that's associated with, the, with these values. I'll select apply changes and leave the default value at zero. I'll add three more tags under the batch data called value one, value two, and value three. You of course can speed up the process with the CSV import by right clicking on this uh, group and select export the tags just inside of that group and then perform a CSV import feature after modifying it in Microsoft Excel. I'm going to add one more tag which is a calculation tag of a string data type. This will be the dynamic query string that we'll use in the update methods. I'm going to give it a tag name of query string. I'm going to set the data type to string and the value source to calculation. An edit button appears for the calculation. I'm now going to select that to edit the calculation. And in quotations I'm going to put where lot number equals and then close quotations and then I'm going to use a function to concatenate the strings together and that's an ampersand then we'll assign a function to convert an integer number to a string we can just use the string function for that we can also use the format number which is a new function out added to the calculation engine the first argument in this calculation contains the tag name and parameter of the integer or floating point number that we want to convert. The second argument, we put a comma in there, is the format on which we want to change that. So if we click OK and select Apply Changes, we would see that the value changes to where lot number equals zero, which corresponds to the lot number itself. So as we change the lot number to say a value of one, we see that the query string updates to that. This is the query string that we're going to then define to our data logging configuration to basically match up the real-time data from the PLC to the data in the database that we want to update. In the batch data group, we're also going to create a trigger tag. We'll give it a tag name of trigger. And this will simply be a Boolean tag with a data type of Boolean. And any time that this tag transitions from false to true is what we're going to use to log the data based upon event. Now let's set up the data logging engine under Configure Data Logging. We'll specify a logging group name here under the Common tab. And we'll just use a logging group name of Batch Data. We'll make the logging group active and we'll specify the logging type. We can use continuous, event driven, specific time of day, or data change. All of those types support the uh, dynamic query string 
function. In this simple example, I'm going to use event-driven logging, and I'm going to specify a Boolean tag that transitioned. And when the value of the trigger tag transitions from false to true, we'll log a new record. Next, under the tags field, we now have the ability to either include or exclude the date and time field. That is up to you. If you exclude the date and time field, notice that trend history is not supported at that time because we wouldn't be able to basically query the database based upon date and time. We'll leave the default as that is enabled. Next, we'll define what fields we want to log. Under the batch data, we want to log the lot number. Let's shorten the field name to lot underscore number. That's going to match up with the same exact query string that we've just defined in our calculation tag. The data type that we're going to create in the database is integer tag. There is a new property called insert only for each database field that aids the update method. With this selected, then this individual field will not be included in the update method, but will be included in any kind of insert if the record doesn't exist. I'm going to select this option for this lot number to leave the lot number as it is, but if it's not found, it will insert a new record and will actually in then include the value as a lot number in that individual field for that new record. We'll add some of the other data that we want to log. We'll add values 1, 2, and 3 with shorter field names. And with value 3 to demonstrate the insert only feature, we'll check that so that if the record is found that value 3 will not be updated with any new data, but will be added when any time that a record is inserted. Keep in mind you can also programmatically define f database fields and logging configurations and also do a CSV import and export either with the individual fields just by right cl clicking on the field list or performing an entire CSV export of all of the data logging configurations. We'll now specify where we're going to log this data. Here we're going to log data to the SQL Server engine. I need to know what is the server name that I want to log to. That could be on a local or remote system. Keep in mind that we do have the disk buffering feature found under the configure options to be able to buffer data to hard disk if there is a database engine problem. This way you would lose no data in your data logging. We'll put in the server name that we found under the SQL Server Management Studio. We'll put in a new database name called Batch Data and a new table called Lots. We'll then specify the new parameter called Update Records with Query String. We could either manually type in a query string like we have here, lot number equals 1, something like that. Or if we leave it blank, we can have it dynamically set based upon the calculation tag. That was the tag that I created for the calculation tag for the dynamic query string. Let's browse for that on the local service, and we'll select the value parameter for that. So whatever the string value is for that query string will now become the query string for the update method itself. We also have another option that shows up when we enable the update record feature and that is to insert records if they do not exist from the query string. So we're going to leave that as the default. We'll now select the add button to add the data logging configuration to the service and now we're ready for some data logging. Let's take a look at the database format using this management studio.
Under the databases object, we have a new database called batch data. Under that database, we have a tables object, and in the tables object, we have a new table called lots. We can see that the query statement is very simple for obtaining the data out of the data table. And if we execute that, we currently have no records because we have not yet executed the event driven tag to log new values. Here's a WPF application I've generated to interact with the data to be able to quickly enter new data into the values and the lot number and to be able to execute the trigger tag based upon a button anytime we want to insert or update a new record. Let's enter a value of 1, 2, and 3 in each of the value fields. And then let's enter a lot number of 1 and we'll update the record with the update record button and now we should have a new record in the table with the lot number of 1 with the values 1, 2, and 3. Now let's change some of the values and use a new lot number of 2 and we'll transition the update record trigger and now we should have a new record with lot number of 2 with the values 201, 202, and 203. Now we'll enter in a new series of values 301, 302, and 303 and change the lot number back to 1. Now this time when I trigger the event to log a new record it will find the lot number 1 and it will update values 1 and 2 to 301 and 302 but it will not update value 3 if you remember under the database field configuration for value 3 and for the lot number we said to insert only so it won't touch those values on this particular update if it can find the record. So now I say update record we still just have two records in the database, so it didn't insert a new record this time, but it did update values 1 and values 2 to the new corresponding values and left the lot number and the value 3 alone to their previous values. And if we look back in the tag configuration, we should see that the query string currently is equal to where lot number is equal to 1. That is what's used in the dynamic query string under the database tab. that we have defined here. If you have any more questions about using this update feature or any of our product features of opcsystems.net, please contact us at opcsystems.com. You can visit the sales page to find your local sales representative. And under the contact us page, you can schedule a web conference for a free product demonstration and we'd be happy to show you this product feature and other product features of the full opcsystems.net suite.